Ta da! Hey, how's it going? I'm Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to do a crash course in Ableton Live 11. It coincides beautifully with the fact that I have just released my complete Ableton Live 11 course, which is a full breakdown of everything that you need to know in order to master the art of Ableton and get your music made so that you can get it out to your fans and your following. If you want to check out that course, if you like my presenting style, the link is below in the description. And if it is your first time here, welcome. Consider liking and subscribing to the channel so that you can be notified when I post out new content. Let's jump into Ableton. It's time for your crash course in Ableton Live 11. Yes. All right, the first thing you might want to do is set up your audio interface. So you need to do that in the preferences and a quick access to the preferences is pressing control or command and comma. And now you have the preferences window and here is your audio input and your audio output device. So your audio interface, will look something like this. I have a Focusrite plugged into this computer right now, but this is an Apollo Twin. So your audio interface is what your speakers and your microphone will plug into. So at the moment, I don't have my microphone set up, but if I wanted to record this mic through into Ableton, I would go and select Focusrite. I'm just having the output at the moment. So my output device is speakers and Focusrite USB. So one of the best features of Ableton is the fact that it has two views. Right now you're currently looking at the session view, but if you press tab on your computer, you will go into the arrangement view. Another way to access these two views is to come to the top right here and you'll see the Ableton symbol. And this is the arrangement view and click on this one. It's now in the session view. So you can either press tab or you can press these two icons here to switch between the two. So what's the difference? Well, in the session view, you are playing clips in vertical. So from top to bottom. In the arrangement view, you're playing audio or MIDI in clips, but in a sequence, in an arrangement from left to right. So anything that you see in this window from left to right is the same as top to bottom here. But with this view, you can pretty much just jam your clips in any order. Whereas in this view, you're going to be playing your clips in a sequence, in an arrangement, in a timeline, in the arrangement view. Let's go back into the session view. We're going to come over to the left here, and this is your browser. So your browser is where you can access your instruments, your effects, your plugins, your samples, grooves, templates. It says everything there in the categories. If you come down to places, this is basically a directory on your hard drive. So if you have some samples or instruments on a hard drive on your computer and you want to have a quick access via the places rather than opening up a new window and dragging and dropping stuff into Ableton, you can press add folder and then you could select whichever folder you want to add, select that folder. And now you have a quick access to that folder in your places. You can then go into that folder here and you can start to drag and drop stuff into Ableton. Back up to the categories and here you have everything that comes with Ableton Live as well as your plugins folder which is your third-party plugins. Say you download something externally that will be in your plugins. But if we come up to sounds here are our instruments that come with Ableton and we can drag and drop an instrument onto the devices window and here we now have an instrument that we can play with our MIDI keyboard. <laughs> So this is a MIDI channel and MIDI is computer information that tells an instrument, a digital instrument to play a particular sound. So when I press down on my keyboard, it's sending MIDI data to this abdominal bass instrument and the instrument is playing audio through the audio interface and out to my headphones. Next to this MIDI channel, we have an audio channel and audio would be for audio samples. So if we go down to our samples, we can find a sample here and drag it and drop it into what we call a clip slot. Now, in order to play this sample, we can double click on it so it shows in the clip view down at the bottom here. And then we can play it by pressing the play button. 
So we're playing audio as an audio clip and we're playing MIDI using a digital instrument. Double click on the top and you will have the instrument in the device window at the bottom here. If you wanted to add a MIDI clip, you can click on the clip slot, press Shift Control or Shift Command and M and now you have a MIDI clip. And instead of playing your keyboard, you can now draw in your notes. So if you double click on the little squares here, and then we press play on this clip. It plays as if you would press play on the audio. If you want to insert another audio channel rather than dragging and dropping, as if you drop it like this, that would just automatically create an audio channel, you can right click in this empty window here and insert audio track. You also have insert MIDI track and insert return track. And you can see that we have shortcuts here, control and T, control shift and T, and control alt and T for a return track. So control, and T, it would be command in replace of control if you're on a Mac, and you can start to insert your tracks on the fly. Super quick. Double clicking on the clip in the clip slot will open up the clip view, and you can see here down at the bottom, this is a MIDI clip view, and this is an audio clip view. If you want to switch to the device, so if we go back onto the MIDI clip, just press shift and tab, and you can toggle between the device view and the clip view. In the session view, if you want to play both of these clips at the same time, you would trigger the scene by pressing play here. The MIDI instrument at the moment is on a loop. If you wanted to loop your audio as well, you could click on it and come down, press warp and then press loop. And now this will loop round when you trigger the scene. And if you wanted to copy these clips down into a different slot, you just hold down on control and drag and drop into a different slot. Now, if you wanted to transfer this to the arrangement view, you just press down on your clips, hold down on control or shift, and then press on your mouse and then press the tab and drag and drop into the arrangement view. You can zoom in by dragging down on the top timeline here. And then to come into the arrangement view, just deactivate the session view. And now we have our clips in the arrangement view. If you wanted to loop a particular section in the arrangement view, just drag and highlight over an area, press control or command and L. And now you will loop, the loop brace is around the clips. And you can see at the top here, this is actually your loop toggle. So you can toggle that on and off. You can shorten or lengthen your loop here. And if we press play on the space bar, it will loop round. You can shorten your clips by dragging on the top here and shortening or lengthening, it will just loop round. So we can shorten that. And then you can click on your clip and if you wanted to copy it or duplicate it, press Control or Command and D and you can duplicate your clip. If you wanted to reverse the clip, you press R and it will reverse it. Press R and it will reverse it back. And if you select over and press backspace, you can delete your clips. The same goes for MIDI. So if you wanted to copy a particular section, you just select over it and press Control or Command and D and it will copy it over. If you wanted to chop out a particular section, you can press Control or Command and E and it will chop out a particular section that you can then drag over and separate from your clip. Let's go back into the browser and we can check out our audio effects. So these are effects that will process and change the sonic quality of your sound. So if we go up to the delays, we can drag a delay onto our MIDI channel, drag and drop. And now the delay will appear after the device. Let's just play it. So we can hear there that the delay is changing the sound that comes out of this device, which is triggered by the MIDI data that we have in the arrangement window here. We can change the parameters of our delay. So we could reduce the feedback, we could reduce the dry wet, and we could change the delay time. So let's press play. If you press A on your keyboard, that will bring up the automation and the automation can be drawn in. You can click on the drop down menu here. You could come to your delay and then you could come to 
dry wet and this will show you the level of the dry wet it says 19 percent if you hover over it if you come down here you can see 19 percent dry wet and automation is pre-programmed information that will tell ableton how to change the parameters so if you click on it you will insert a breakpoint and this breakpoint now will go from zero percent to a hundred percent on the dry wet And you can see here on the delay that it's gone from zero to 100% on the dry wet. And it also has a little red blob, which tells you that there's automation on the dry wet control. So automation is changing the parameters without you actually having to do anything, which could be a really nice way to transition from one section to another section. Press the A key on your keyboard to hide the automation. It doesn't deactivate it. It just hides it from your view. And then you can also group your channels together. So if you select on one and then hold down on shift or control and press control or command and G, and it will group your tracks together. You can rename your group or any track for that matter if you just select on it and press Control or Command and R, and now you can rename your group to whatever you like, drums, bass, I'm gonna do intro because these aren't really related to each other, but that's how you would rename your tracks. Now, if you wanted to collapse this group, you click here and it collapses and then you open it as well. And same with the drop down triangles, you can collapse each track and so you can save on window space in the arrangement. Return channels are separate to audio and MIDI tracks. So they are where you would put extra processing that you would then send your tracks or your groups to those channels. So instead of putting like what we've done here, we've put the delay on the track, we might wanna put an effect on a return channel. Now there's no return channels in this window at the moment, you would access them by pressing R, there aren't any here, but if you right click and insert a return track, you can now see that there's a return channel and you can hide that window by pressing R and then pressing R again, and the same as what we did with the tracks. We could open up our return channel by pressing the triangle, and then we could drop an effect from our audio effects. So let's go to reverb. So we're gonna put a reverb onto the return channel, and now we have a return channel, and what you'll see here in the actual tracks, so in the audio tracks and the groups and the MIDI tracks, we have a send. So this is going to send our track to the return channel, and the return channel is going to then output whatever the reverb is doing to that audio. So now let's send our group to the return channel. I'm gonna play the track so you can hear the difference and the reverb is then going to join in the mix. And the great thing about return channels is that you can send multiple tracks and multiple groups to that return channel so that you can start to blend and use one channel to make everything sound nice and cohesive together. Finally, you might want to save your project and you can do that by coming up to file and coming down to all of these different options of saving, which you will find out more about in my Ableton Live course. <laughs> course. Uh, but yeah, you might want to save it. You can see here as well that you have shortcuts, control and S or command and S. I never use the file and save here. I never use that. Not many people do. All you need to do is remember control and S and then it will bring up the window and you can save your Ableton project. That is your crash course into Ableton Live 11. It is brilliant. If you haven't yet got a copy of it, grab the free trial because it's 90 days for free with the full Ableton Live suite. It is brilliant. It's a very powerful piece of technology. And if you do want a full in-depth breakdown of Ableton Live, check out the course. It is on sale now. You do get free MIDI packs, samples, templates and racks which i have included in there as well as a full breakdown of everything that you need to know in order to make music in ableton live 11. it will speed up your workflow it will get you to acquire the skill and master the art of ableton live faster than if you just trawled through the youtube videos and the internet i'm becky safe i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this 
Drop me a comment below to let me know what you thought. And also your comments do really help because they boost the YouTube algorithm and they get my channel out to more people like you, which is brilliant. We want to build this community, get it bigger. Yes. Thank you very much for checking out the video. I'm Becky Safe and I will see you next time. Peace. Bye.